The Speckled Band Suddenly there was a momentary gleam of a light up in the direction of the ventilator, which vanished immediately, but was succeeded by a strong smell of burning oil and heated metal. Someone in the next room had lit a dark lantern. I heard a gentle sound of movement, and then all was silent once more, though the smell grew stronger. For half an hour I sat with straining ears. Then suddenly another sound became audible, a very gentle soothing sound like that of a small jet of steam escaping continually from a kettle. The instant that we heard it, Holmes sprang from the bed, struck a match, and lashed furiously with his cane at the bell-pull. "'You see it, Watson?' he yelled. "'You see it?' But I saw nothing. At the moment when Holmes struck the light I heard a low, clear whistle, but the sudden glare flashing into my weary eyes made it impossible for me to tell what it was at which my friend lashed so savagely. I could, however, see that his face was deadly pale and filled with horror and loathing. He had ceased to strike, and was gazing up at the ventilator, when suddenly there broke from the silence of the night the most horrible cry to which I have ever listened. It swelled up louder and louder, a hoarse yell of pain and fear and anger, all mingled in the one dreadful shriek. They say that away down in the village and even in the distant parsonage, that cry raised the sleepers from their beds. It struck cold to our hearts, and I stood gazing at Holmes and he at me, until the last echoes of it had died away into the silence from which it rose. "'What can it mean?' I gasped. "'It means that it is all over,' Holmes answered. "'And perhaps, after all, it is for the best. "'Take your pistol, and we shall enter Dr. Roylott's room.' "'With a grave face he lit the lamp and led the way down the corridor. "'Twice he struck at the chamber door without any reply from within. "'Then he turned the handle and entered, I at his heels, with the cocked pistol in my hand.' It was a singular sight which met our eyes. On the table stood a dark lantern with the shutter half open, throwing a brilliant beam of light upon the iron safe, the door of which was ajar. Beside this table on the wooden chair sat Dr. Grimesby Roylott, clad in a long grey dressing-gown, his bare ankles protruding beneath, and his feet thrust into red, heelless Turkish slippers. Across his lap lay the short stock with the long lash, which we had noticed during the day. His chin was cocked upward, and his eyes were fixed in a dreadful rigid stare at the corner of the ceiling. Round his brow he had a peculiar yellow band with brownish speckles, which seemed to be bound tightly round his head. As we entered he made neither sound nor motion. The band! The speckled band, whispered Holmes. I took a step forward. In an instant his strange headgear began to move, and there reared itself from among his hair the squat, diamond-shaped head and puffed neck of a loathsome serpent. It was a swamp adder, cried Holmes, the deadliest snake in India. He has died within ten seconds of being bitten. Violence does in truth recoil upon the violent, and the schemer falls into the pit which he digs for another. Let us thrust this creature back into its den, and we can then remove Miss Stoner to some place of shelter, and let the county police know what has happened. As he spoke he drew the dog-whip swiftly from the dead man's lap, and throwing the noose round the reptile's neck, he drew it from its horrid perch, and, carrying it at arm's length, threw it into the iron safe, which he closed upon it. 